I love to be like the one that kind of starts a rally and like kind of sets the tone, um, especially like the first inning of the game. Like I love to get on and like fire the team up and like kind of show, okay, like we can do this. Like if I start off, you know, on a good note, like everyone's gonna have so much more confidence going into it. You recently played in your first Bedlam series. <clears throat> what did the team learn about itself after that series? Yeah, I think, um, well, obviously, like, the first Bedlam was a really cool experience. I think just playing here with, like, all the fans and, like, all of the, like, excitement and, like, hype around it, it was just, like, really cool. Like, it felt so like real, like when we started the first game and like how loud the stadium was, like my like heart was racing. Like I was like, okay, like this is like intense. Um, but I think we just learned like, you know, how much I guess like fun we have like playing softball together. Cause like, um, kind of like what we talked about, like we kind of were on, I guess like a little bit of a rough patch and like going into that weekend, we just really wanted to just play with passion and excitement and just like leave it all out there. And like, I think we really did. And you can see it like on the field, like everybody was just like so excited for each other. And like our dugout was so loud the whole time. Like we were all just like really passionate and excited to be there. Um, so I think it really just kind of made us feel like, just like, I guess like we, got, we kind of have that like excitement back and like we all just, I think it just had fun playing last weekend. So yeah. They have a belief that they can hang with them. And right now they're hitting with them. Third hit of the inning. Record attendance was set multiple <laughs> days of that series. What does mm -hmm. that mean to you to have such great fan support? It's honestly, it's just like, it just makes it so much more fun to play. Like knowing that all of our fans are there and like they're, they were so loud. Like we could literally hear them the whole time. Like every play, like the stadium just, like erupted it seemed like and like having that support and excitement it just makes it so much more fun honestly like yeah I would just say it makes it so much more fun this was your first bedlam because this is your first year with cowgirl softball where were you prior to this season um yeah so I played for four years at Purdue and then um with the COVID year I had an extra year and um yeah, just decided to transfer here to finish out my career. Why did you decide to start your career at Purdue? I guess like, so out of high school, I wasn't highly, I guess, recruited, you, you could say. Um, I played for like a smaller travel team, so I didn't get a ton of exposure. And um, so Purdue was one of my best options coming out of high school. And then also, Purdue is a really good engineering school. So I graduated from Purdue with my degree in chemical engineering. Um, so I like, I'm really happy I went to Purdue because I got a great education, like made great friends and like the softball part was still fun, but like we just never performed like I hoped we would. Um, so that's why I was really thankful to have like this extra year so I could, you know, go have that competitive softball experience. What were some of the other places you were considering out of high school? Um, my main options, it was mostly between Purdue and Northwestern, and um, and then also Wisconsin, like those were my top three. I, growing up, I always wanted to play in the Big Ten, which was kind of fun, because like those were all my like schools around my hometown, because I grew up in Illinois. Um, so I was happy that I had, you know, those kind of teams that were interested in me. But uh, yeah, I ended up going with Purdue because I guess some of the other schools like didn't really have a good plan, I guess for me, like going into college, like they were like, we don't know where you're gonna play. We don't know if, if you're gonna play, like whatever. And, I, and like Purdue was very confident. They're like, we know you're gonna be, a, you know, an impact player here. And like, I was pretty confident that like, I could come and do a, like a team and have a good impact right away. So yeah, it ended up just going with Purdue. After you decided to transfer, what schools reached out to you? Um, okay, so there were, there were several teams that reached out. It's kind of overwhelming going into the transfer world because everybody kind of just like, 
emails you all at once and people are like calling you nonstop. Um, so it's a little overwhelming, but um, by the time the World Series was over, because I went into the portal in January, which was a really weird time because um, like everyone is starting their season and I was still playing that, that whole season. You so, were in the portal yeah. while also playing for Purdue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my coaches, like, they knew I was leaving, but, like, they, like, I still wanted to play that season. So it was kind of like, you know, like, we had a good, I guess, agreement about it. <laughs> and it ended up working out. But, um, so in January, there were a few schools here and there that I was, like, keeping in contact with. Um, one of them was Arkansas. Like, they contacted me right away. And I had a really good relationship with them like throughout the season. And like there were a few other teams that I like kept in close contact with. And then by the time like regionals and super regionals came around, um, I started talking to Oklahoma State and um, Northwestern. And Northwestern again, which is kind of funny. And then um, once the World Series was over, I started talking to Texas as well. And those were, my top options and it was kind of interesting though because like after every team was done like more people would reach out so it was like it was kind of hard for me because I wanted to wait until the teams that were playing still were done but then I also wanted to like still keep in contact with the people who had reached out earlier like just in case those people didn't have like a spot for me so it's a very overwhelming experience but um it was pretty fun once I narrowed down, oh, like these are the schools I wanna go visit because like the visits are obviously like a lot of fun and you get to like go see the campus and like meet people. Um, so yeah, those are my top four, I guess. Why did you ultimately decide on Oklahoma State? So I really liked my visit. Um, I, I had like a really fun visit, I would say like it wasn't, like they were trying to, I guess, wow me when I came here. Like it was literally just like, oh, like this is this is what we have. Like these are our facilities. Like this is campus. Um, they're kind of they kind of just like laid it out like super honest and like it was like really chill, I guess. Like you know what I mean. And I got to spend a lot of time with a few of the girls on the team. Um, so like Taylor, Tuck, Cheyenne, and uh, Morgan were with me the whole time on my visit. So I got to spend a lot of time with them. And um, yeah, I really liked, you know, just, I was, when I was at home watching like the World Series and all that, I noticed like Oklahoma State, they'd been the past like three years in a row, which is like really what I wanted. Like I wanted a team that's kind of like right there at that level. And I knew with like Coach G, we were gonna have another stack team this year. So um, yeah, everything just kind of worked out. And I really felt like here, they really meant like everything about the culture. Like, you know, everyone kind of says, oh, we're a family, but like I could actually see it and I could actually feel it when I came here. So that's a big reason for me. You said you watched them a little in the World Series. They had made it three years in a row. What else did you know about the program before committing here? Yeah, so it's actually funny because uh, one of the girls that played here for, I think she played here for like three years. Her name's Gabby Spring. She transferred to Purdue the la the year before. So then me and her played together at Purdue my last year. And so uh, when I started talking about like maybe leaving Purdue, she was like, oh my gosh, like you have to go to Oklahoma State. Like they're so good. Like it's like, you're gonna love it. Like you're gonna love everybody. And I was like, okay, so I kind of had a good idea about the program a little bit. Like I knew, I actually knew like how it is behind closed doors. Cause like when you have someone that's been through it, they're not gonna lie to you, especially like one of my friends, like she's not gonna lie and be like, oh, everything's perfect. You know what I mean? So I knew really kind of like I was saying, like the culture of the team, like I had a really good idea of like the coaching staff and the girls and stuff before I even had even been in contact with Coach G at all. So that was really, really help. Um, but yeah, I pr pretty much other than that, I kind of just knew how competitive the team was and like, um, I guess like just watching them play, like how much fun they had and how much like passion and excitement they play with. So those are the main things that I knew, I guess. How does Stillwater compare to West Lafayette? 
<clears throat> Honestly, I feel like they're pretty similar. Like, I feel like both are like college towns. Um, Stillwater's probably like a little smaller, but I still, I still feel like there are a lot of similarities. Like just with the small town, college town vibe, like everybody has so much spirit, I guess, for the school. And um, I feel like Stillwater kind of has more of like a closeness to it. I feel like, like I feel like more people are more like intertwined and like interact in the community more, I guess. Um, but honestly, I'd say they're very similar. When you first came here, agreed to come here, Coach Gajewski did not know where you would play, but mm -hmm. he let you compete with Kylie Naomi, who's been here forever for the shortstop position. What was that competition like? Yeah, that was really intimidating. I feel like I never had somebody else, I guess, like that I'd been competing with for pretty much my whole time at Purdue. Like I kind of locked in like shortstop right away. And so, Honestly, it was a lot of fun. Like I had somebody that I wanted to be better than every day. And like, so did she. Cause I kind of think she had the same experience with it being like, oh, I never had anybody competing for the spot before. So I think it really made both of us kind of level up a little bit. And like both of us really wanted to, you know, show how we could compete there. And, um, yeah, so it was a lot of fun. And like Kylie also did a really good job of helping me kind of come into this team and like kind of, I guess with like our cuts and relays and like defense and stuff, like she helped me the whole time because like that's just the kind of player she is and like kind of leader she is. Like she really, you know, wanted it to be like, okay, make it even, I guess. You know what I mean? Because even though she had the experience here, like she really helped me out either way. And, um, yeah, so honestly, I would just say it was a lot of fun and really helped both of us kind of level up, I would say. Where did you end up playing? So I ended up at second base. Um, I've been playing second the whole year, which honestly is perfectly fine with me. Like I knew, I knew before coming here that like I was probably gonna have to switch, which really wasn't a problem for me because I knew like in order to kind of have, I guess, like the best like everyone in their best spot, you know what I mean? I kind of knew I was gonna have to move. And I actually really like second base a lot. Like it was kind of hard to learn like the new cuts and stuff and just like, you know, just everything about playing a new position. It kind of takes a minute to get adjusted to it, but I really like it so far and I'm having a lot of fun there, so. You and Kylie have teamed up for plenty of double plays. How mm -hmm. do you guys think you've clicked in your individual positions, but as teammates? I think so. I think both of us are just, we both have so much experience, which is like really helpful. Um, like even though we haven't been playing together for the past few years, we both just have that experience and kind of know how, after practicing for the whole fall, like we know how each other plays and like, I think that makes it really easy because like we've gotten really comfortable with each other and like I know I guess like on double plays like where she's gonna throw it and stuff and like we've worked on our footwork and stuff like millions of times by now. So I think just over the course of the fall and really building up that confidence with each other and like kind of comfort with each other um, really helps. You're also the leadoff hitter, correct? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Make sure that hasn't changed. How do you like batting leadoff? I really like it. I uh, I love to be like the one that kind of starts a rally and like kind of sets the tone, um, especially like the first inning of the game. Like I love to get on and like fire the team up and like kind of show, okay, like we can do this. Like if I, if I start off, you know, on a good note, like everyone's gonna have so much more confidence going into it. Um, and yeah, I've always kind of been more of like a high average high on base percentage type hitter, which is pretty good for lead off because, you know, the more times you can get on, the more chances that the people behind me are gonna hit me in. Um, so yeah, I really just like to be the one that kind of gets things going at the beginning of the game, especially. Season is that one has hit hard. Ooh. Rachel Becker's due. Rachel Becker has season that's 41, the record's 48. Sound the horn. Another round tripper, a three run shot for Rachel Becker. 
You mentioned your typical high average hitter. You're currently in the top 10 in all of the NCAA with a 459 batting average, and you're ranked third in all of the NCAA in doubles with 18. How does that make you feel? Um, pretty good, I guess. I, um, I mean, I think that just kind of shows like consistency, which I think is really important in a leadoff hitter. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to, I guess, have like one game where you do super well and then the next like three or four you'll do eh. And then it's like, okay, you scored three runs in this game and then none, you know what I mean? Like I think the consistency part is really important, which I think shows like high average is more about like how many times you know, you are actually getting base and stuff on base. Um, and then the doubles thing I think is cool just because I've been really trying to like work on my power numbers and stuff throughout my career and I've gotten better every year with them. And so I think it's just, you know, a testament to like just putting in the work and and yeah, just sticking to my plan and my approach and stuff. You said it yourself out of high school, you did not have a lot of offers, and now you're high ranking in several statistics in the NCAA. What does that say about your work ethic? Mm. Uh, I think it just shows, like, it doesn't really matter, like, what, I guess, travel team you play for, or, like, where you come from. Because I was, like, when I was younger, I was always like, oh, I'm not on the best travel team, I'm not gonna get recruited, like, I'm not gonna be able to play, like, whatever. But I think it just shows like if you put in the work and like you want it and like you have a dream and you work hard at it every day and you're consistent with that, like you can pretty much do anything you want. Um, because I never thought I would have the opportunity to play for, I guess like a World Series team, I would say, like a really competitive team. Um, even when I was at Purdue, like I was like, that's just never gonna happen for me. And I think it just shows like, if you really want it and you work for it, then you can do anything you want, so. This is hammered deep to right field and gone. Rachel takes one deep. It's 5 nothing, Oklahoma State. How would you describe yourself as a player? I would say I'm more of a, like, I don't want to say like calm, but I would say I'm more of like steady. Like I don't really get too excited and I don't ever really get down. Like I really try to stay like level headed or else like that's when I start, you know, like thinking too much and get, get off of my like plan and stuff like that. So I would say I'm very, um, also very competitive, I think. Um, also I would say consistent like I really try to bring the same you know energy and um, confidence and I guess like effort I try to bring that every day um, you know to the best I can so I guess as a player overall I would say I don't know like consistent competitive um, yeah, I guess those are the main ones. Coach Gajewski has described you as quiet but competitive. How do you feel about that? Um, I mean, I guess I kind of agree. Like, I, I am very competitive, but I don't know. I feel like the quiet part is, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm that quiet, but like, I could see why he would say that. Cause like, in like the group stuff, like I, I'm not like the loudest one and I like never have been and I never will be probably. Like, that's just like not who I am. But um, in, I feel like smaller groups are like, I don't know, I don't think I'm that quiet, but I like, I could see why he would say that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, but it makes sense. Where do you think you make the biggest impact for your team? I feel like, kind of like we were talking about like the leadoff spot, I think that is a big, makes, I think that is probably the spot I make the biggest impact just because like I can, you know, help everyone else kind of feel more confident when they step up to the plate. Like if I'm getting the job done, 
And even if I don't, like the girls are still gonna, like they're gonna pick me up anyway. But I think it really just helps the team, you know, like settle in a little bit. Like if, for example, like if I get on the first inning and we score a run, like everyone is just feels so much more confident going forward. And I guess another area is just having like so much experience, like with this being my fifth year. Um, and just having like the knowledge of the game, I think is is just like, I feel like you can see that. Like we have a lot of fifth years in our team and like we have a lot of people that have that experience. And I think you can tell like the younger girls know if they ever have a question or anything, like they could literally ask any of us in, you know, I think all the fifth years kind of do a good job of setting like the standard and the example for the younger girls. So I would say those are the main things. When did you realize that you had a reach base streak going? <laughs> um, I think I realized, I think it was like when I was like halfway to through the season this year, people started to kind of like point it out and um, at that point I was like, okay, like that's just what I'm supposed to do, honestly. Like as the leadoff hitter, like I'm supposed to get on base every game. Like I hope I'm doing that. <laughs> so like I didn't even really think twice about it until like it came to the point where it was like pretty close for like the record and everything. And then people were like really pointing it out. And I was like, okay, like, I'm really trying not to think about it that much, just like going into the games. Like I was like, I'm just gonna do my best and see what happens. What was the record? I'm pretty sure it was 48. And what did you get? I got 49. So <laughs> I got it by one game, which was kind of funny because I feel like they kind of jinxed me when they posted it. I was like, cause literally the next game, I didn't get on base. <laughs> the streak was over. Um, were you bummed that it ended? I mean, I was a little bit just because like, I mean, I wanted to do, I wanted to do it for every game this year. And obviously, you know, it stinks when things like that come to an end, especially like one game over the record. Like, but I mean, I was honestly, it's not a big deal to me. Like I just wanted to kind of like, kind of just continue doing what I've been doing and not even thinking about, you know, records and stuff because that, like I said earlier, like that's not my focus for this year at all. Like I just want to help the team win. So, I mean, I really don't care that much in the end. <laughs> it's like a no hitter though. Number one, yeah, about a no -hitter, like it's like you, you don't talk about a no hitter. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you want it, but like in the, in the end, it's not a big deal to me, so. Do you know how old the 48 record was? Um, I'm not sure like, I'm not exactly sure like what year, but I know that it was Shippy's record. So yeah, it was kind of funny. What did she say when you officially hit 49? Yeah, she, she just congratulated me. It was like super happy for me and excited for me. And like, I know I couldn't even gotten that record without her help this season. So obviously just like super excited and happy for me. You're in 50 straight dating back to her Purdue 2022 season. She was named third team at large shortstop as Becker goes the other way with depth and it bounces off the wall. Oklahoma State will pick up their second. Here we go. It's like this is the final draftee. They're rounding it out. Tori, tell us who it's going to be. Okay, the final selection of the Athletes Unlimited 2023 college draft is a middle infielder from Oklahoma State. Rachel Becker. Back in April, you were a second round pick in the women's professional softball draft. What was your reaction when you got the call? Um, I was I was pretty shocked. Honestly, I didn't expect um, to get picked that early. And I mean, I just was, it was just crazy. Like it was just a crazy moment. Like I was like, this is what, I mean, people, I guess, dream about I mean I didn't never really think I was gonna play professional just because like kind of like I mentioned earlier I never thought I would even be on a team like this so like I never thought I would have the opportunity to do that but I mean it was honestly just like a dream come true and just so crazy to like hear my name called like it was just like a cool moment Kylie Naomi was also drafted to the same team how does it feel knowing you'll be teammates again next season 
Yeah. Um, it, it's it's also like a really big comfort thing. I feel like for me, just like going into a a new team and a new environment, it's so much easier having someone that kind of knows you and knows how we play together. Um, especially like if we're if we both go and we're both up the middle, like we already have that connection and like we I don't know. I just feel like it adds so much more comfort. Before we can think about professional, you still have a postseason to get mm -hmm. through. How do you hope this season ends for the Cowgirls? Um, I hope uh, I hope that we obviously go out on top. That would be ideal. But above that, I just hope we like leave it all out there. And I know we will. Like I know that everyone is gonna be, you know, just like on top of it and like so excited to play and so excited to kind of show how much we've put into this season so far. And like, obviously like this is the most important part of the season. So I really think we're all gonna step up and um, no matter what, like we're gonna leave it all out there and not like hold anything back, so yeah. You said you never expected to play on a team like this, a team that's been to the World Series. Mm -hmm. How will it feel for you to play in your first regional and hopefully super regional and World Series? For me, I think it's just gonna be like really special because um, it'll all be new and I know the stakes are gonna be so much higher than anything I've ever experienced. Um, but I think that is just something that I've always wanted and looked forward to. And like, I know there's gonna be some pressure and probably some nerves, but like, I think I've worked so hard my whole career to learn how to kind of overcome that and how to still be relaxed and still be confident no matter what situation it is. So I think I'm really just gonna use, you know, that trust in my preparation throughout my whole career to be like, I know I can do this. Like, yeah, the stakes are a lot higher and like there's actually something on the line here, but like, I think I can, I think I'll be able to still be calm and confident um, going into that just because I do have, you know, the experience of four years behind me. Um, I think it'd be a little different like if I was a freshman going into it, but um, honestly, I'm just really excited overall. Like, I think it's gonna be such a cool experience. What will it take for this team to win it all? Um, kind of like I mentioned earlier, I think it's just gonna take everybody being, you know, really invested and just really, like our team, we've kind of, I wouldn't say like lost, like the passion that we've all had the past few weeks, just in our little slump. But I think last weekend really helped us kind of reignite that. And so I really think we're just gonna need to like keep high energy and just, you know, be super excited about what we're doing. And um, everyone is just, I think, is just gonna have to play the way that they know how to. Cause there have been times when our team has been just on it, like completely. I like thinking back to Clearwater when we like run rolled everybody and like our pitchers were lights out, our defense was lights out. Like, I think that's just what we're gonna need. Like, we're just gonna have to all click. And, um, and we can do that. So I think just sticking to what we've done before and kind of keeping, you know, a good, I guess, like approach and a good plan to everything and just staying focused and staying high energy. I think just those main things are really gonna help us. You only have one season at Oklahoma State. Mm -hmm. How do you hope fans remember you? I hope that they remember, um, I mean, I guess I just, I hope they remember kind of like our season in general. And like, I know that's probably gonna be based on how we finish here, which is gonna be really fun to see. Um, but I guess kind of just, I hope they see that I kind of came in and like tried my best to help the team any way I could because this year I really wanted it to be for me like a team focus, which is like, kind of funny to say because like obviously it should always be team focused but like in the past it was kind of hard to do that because our team wasn't as connected or as motivated or driven as as this team is 
And so in the past, you know, I was always kind of focused on my performance and like, I guess, you know, trying to do everything I could to help my performance. You know what I mean? But like here is like everything I do, I'm really trying to benefit the team in any way I can. So I feel like, I don't know. I just feel like they help. I just feel like they remember that the impact I made on this on this team this year and um, and just remember the team in general just because, you know, how well we're going to finish this year.